bad boy right there. That's a bad boy right there. You see his eyes. He was like, oh my God, what did I just get hit with? The highlights are going to be rolling deep into the night. Here's how he finished it. Bucks. And a wide sweeping. Wow! Just a huge haymaker right hand from Lucas Brown. Annihilates Junior Fong. To clear his head. Whoa. There it comes again! A thunderous shot! Scores a first round knockout! This is what we call getting caught cold. Junior Fall shooting the jab, leaving that lead hand out. Yes, that jousting type of jab. It got caught right over the top. Timed perfectly. You see that jab go out? Did you see Brown slide in behind that jab? and come right over the top. Yeah, I believe this is the last shot right here. You see him moving in for the kill, but that was right behind the head. Wow, oh, and the referee didn't even call that. Right behind the head. He likes to get in range. He'll flick that right jab just to kind of blind the opponent Ooh. because he's really tall for the weight class. To and there's that left right hand, and he's down again. He's up against the ropes, helpless. And he does a backflip once the referee, Eric Dali, pushes him off of Carmouche. And you see, this is all about positioning. You know, you see the lead foot outside, the lead foot of his opponent setting it up. Beautiful, nice finish, but the follow-up punches right there. I mean, that was probably unnecessary. You didn't have to throw those punches, but you know what? You in the midst of the action. And he wasn't down yet. I mean, he wasn't down yet, yeah, but if the ropes wasn't there, you know, uh, Valdez. Oh, big left hook here from uh, Shushu Carrington on Stephen Brown. As you see him leaning back against the ropes and his body language has changed completely here. Yeah, this fight just a matter of time. Shushu is slowly walking down, breaking down Brown. And there it is, a left hook, a double uppercut. The legs are bent and down goes Brown. Well, I mean, it, it, it's simple. You know, from the previous round, he was dominating. See, that was a frame right there. Setting up, lining up the head for the right hand. But beautiful shot. He had Brown against the ropes. Brown bounced off the ropes and hit him with another uppercut and then another uppercut. Just beautiful placement right there by the young man, Shushu. Boom, right hand, frame that. Left hook, he was hurt right there. Brown was actually knocked out right before he hit the ground. Boom, right hand, uppercut, another left hook. The referee was a tad bit late. Oh, man, that left hook downstairs really hurt Hale, and he follows it up with those shots that put him on his back. That's it. That had to end that way. The courage of Hill was gonna help him get up. He just shot the shot right there. He threw his jab. He knew the end was near. Just the uppercut overhand right. That was just, he computed what he needed to do and he reacted in, in so quickly that Jeremy Hill had no chance to defend himself. Look at that. So he threw the left, his, he was leaned to the left, but he knew he was coming back around with the right hand. He's, he's like two steps up ahead all the time. Just a great combination for Raymond Murataya. Look, this body shot right here. Well, it's an uppercut right hand. I thought it was going to be a left hook in the right hand. That was going to end the night. It was actually an uppercut in the right hand that ended the night. Beautiful shot right there, right on the chin. Shane Mosley had Oscar De La Hoya's number. Oh, nice body shot there, finally, from Floyd Diaz, and it worked. What did I tell you? He's done. Eight, That's what I told you. Nine, ten. What a knockout from Floyd Diaz. Look, look at he came out quick, got the high guard, shot the jab right down the middle, came up high, bow, right into the body. Brought those hands up. I'm telling you about that high guard. Got to be careful. There it is. You see him def defending right there with Ooh. that high guard. Boom, right in the solar plex, right between that guard. Beautiful. Let's listen to this. Stay on your ground and counter. That's what you hear from Buddy McGirt, what he's trying to get while Derek oh, to go. Is that? Yep. Stay close enough so you can Three, land. Get him four, the punch. Five, Stay close six, enough so you can land. Seven. You hear Betty McGirt coaching and teaching, and you see Balderas is processing. Oh, another 
right hand to the right temple. There. And you it's can just so see, quick. Dre, you <laughs> could just see the way he kept throwing and his leg came out from under him as Valderas comes to check on him. Well, that's what he loves. Now he has the right hand as a kill shot. Wow. Double threat on both sides. You know, he has the speed. He has the amateur pedigree to go along with him as well. He has the ring savvy, the ring IQ, and landing shots like that, that he worked on on the pads. That's unbelievable. If Brooks not careful, but I don't see that happen. That's not likely at this point. Start of round number six. Khan has been in trouble. Oh. Look at Brooke on the attack. Here he goes. He wants to end it right here. Brooke is stalking. That's it. It's over. <laughs> it is over. Cal Brook wins by TKO in six. Cal Brook did everything he was supposed to do. Walked down Khan. Landed the big, 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 harder punches. You know, Amir Khan has always stayed away from Kell Brook. And now we see why. Amir Khan knew he couldn't take the punching power of Kell Brook. And it showed in this fight tonight. You know, Khan is really going to have to hang up, hang up the gloves. I'm hearing that they have a rematch clause. If Khan was to lose this fight, he can get a rematch. I don't think there needs to be a rematch. We know who the better fighter is now, and his name is Kell Brook. Final CompuBox numbers really emphasize how much the power punching was effective for Kell Brook, and it started very early on with the power jab and the straight right hand. Typically, we see left-handed fighters do that. That's what, we, that's what they do to us <laughs> when we throw the right hand. Oh, that left hook drops him. Wow. On his knees, crawling around. And Kenny Baylor says, I've seen enough. Right hand down to the body. You see the foot placement outside. That's where you want to be when you're fighting against a southpaw. Right hand right there on the shoulder, on the chin. Boom. Come around with the left hook. And guess who was coming to his right? Chavez. Check it out right here. Right hand on the shoulder. Chavez is looking for the left hook. Nope. There's a right hand right in between. The right hand of Chavez was down while he was throwing the left hand and right on the money. Isley should be happy with the dominant performance, but he always wants a little bit more. And he talked about needing recognition, Dre. And there it is! That's how you get recognized with the perfect right hand! Now we can see. There you go. Absolutely right. By the right now. We see him stalking, looking, looking at stubs. Just a great count. That doesn't look like a hard shot, but it was on the money. It looked like it hit stubs right on the point of the chin. Boom, right there. And he had the nerve, and I'm talking Troy Izzy, to stay in the fire, allow stubs to open up and move his head off the line and just land that short overhand right, right there. It's hard to get a knockout if you're not willing to be in the fire. That's a temperament thing. Troy Isley was in the fire and let go a beautiful shot right there after he had done all the hard work to set the table. Now it's time to eat, and he ate in a big way tonight. Great performance by Troy Isley. I mean, it was a perfect shot. Let's listen to it. Mm. That traveled a few inches, Bernardo. Just a few. You see Nova here pawing with the jab. You see the right hook that comes around. Got Nova the bag out. Didn't even see the left hand coming straight down the middle as he's retreating with his left hand extended. Right down the middle, right on the button. Boom, parked him right in the corner like a valet driver. My goodness, what a shot. One more time, dip. Right, straight left hand, right down the middle. Boom. See the head even hit off the canvas as well. Tess, all of this happened because of the great boxing that Ramirez did. So now, Nova doesn't know what's coming. He tries to leave out of the back door without saying goodbye, and Ramirez followed him out with that straight left hand because he had already got the distance that he needed, and he knew that Nova makes those kind of mistakes. Here we see it again. 
Watch the feint, the dip feint, the level change. Subtle level change right here. Brought the eyes down, then the hook came around, then a the straight left hand right down the middle. He never expected that punch. That's why you saw that type of reaction right there. That's what he's doing. He's setting them up. He's letting them work. Now he's using the jab, sticking them on the outside. And here comes the counter. What a left hook. The leg is bent once again from Andujar. What a finish from hometown Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York. Bruce Shoe Shoe Carrington. Look at this. Check this out. The tactical work is how, when, and why you do things. Everything should have a purpose. There's the right hand over the top of the jab. Left hook right on the money, right on the chin. And then you see the defensive effort after the fact from Carrington. Beautiful slip counter right there to the outside. Boom. Let's listen Left hand to on the it. inside. Let's listen to it in real time because it was devastating. I mean, that's the, the beauty of those shots, Dre, is that you end up looking up at those lights here at the Hulu Theater, and Sushu just shines. Final half minute of round number one. Ibera, 28-year-old from Denver, Colorado, a four-year pro. So Ali Walsh gets our evening going, and he scores a knockdown in the closing seconds and wins the fight like that. That's the right hand, Tess. Yep. Nico Ali Walsh, the legend lives on. Well, that legendary name is getting better inch by inch. Nico was looking for this right hand all night long. He threw a left hook, landed it. Blinded his opponent with that now. Overhand right, just landed right on the chin. You can't get hit with that shot, especially early in a fight, and think that you're going to take it well. Here we see again an exchange with Ibar landed, but his didn't land enough to detour Ali Wash. Ali Wash had his eyes set on that right hand, and it landed right on the button, right on the money, and then down goes Ibar, and he wasn't getting up. And you can tell the way that he fell that the fight was over. Never saw the punch coming, Dre. Like you said, the left hook right there, blinded him, lined him up for that overhand right. Put him in that position for the overhand right. And Ibarra goes down. Now, this is the thing. Ali Walsh, two fights ago, I would say, uh, I don't know if he got it. I don't know if he had it. Had a trainer change, went into the lab, worked his butt off. You can see he was sparring top competition in the gyms in Las Vegas, and you can see a major improvement in his ability to box. He was in with Edgar Berlanga. Edgar Berlanga, who is the well-heralded super middleweight prospect with loads of power, so yes, it pays off to be in the gym. It pays off to be in with better fighters, and that 3-2 combination that he has been working hard towards does this right there. First round, knockout, Nico Ali Walsh. Class disparity, Tim, right in front of us. Oh, yeah. This is the WBO's number three contender, an unbeaten guy from England. Oh. Another left hand comes in from Janabek. He's off balance again. He's getting swarmed. Headshot comes in. Just a matter of time. Oh, big shot comes in. And another. Oh, the uppercut floors him. And it's over. The uppercut absolutely destroys him. Slice it. Which way? And you see Janabek right here measuring with his left hand. See, when you use your left hand, you're blind. You keep your opponent occupied. And the follow-up combinations right there. And what did he do? He followed the body. He saw the opening right up the middle. The left hand right on the button right there. He saw the hand drop down. Boom. Change the angle. I told you guys in the beginning. Watch the straight left hand and also watch the left hand uppercut. Another left hand to the body from Dillian White. Ooh.
to my eval E from the word eraser right there, right down the pipe. As you see, Dillian White moving in, trying to get in the inside. Oh. Short, precise, right uppercut, right on the 10. And Timber! This is a Viper strike <laughs> right uppercut. It is so fast. <laughs> His head snaps up and down so fast. It's an instant knockout. Look at that oh right uppercut. God. From a six foot nine, 264 pound man with that speed of his right hand. He blinded him, blinded him with the jab. Move those hands, right uppercut, right up the middle. Here it comes at real speed. Watch this. Oh, right on the chin, instant knockout. When a man that big, with that much leverage, coming from that distance, strikes that punch, it is TNT. Crown him the king. Tyson Fury annihilates Dylan White with one punch. Gentlemen, I received my instructions in the dressing room. You know what we're here for. Remember to protect yourself at all times. With fire, and that's just the way it is. For better or worse. Impressive knockout victory for the monster. Wow. Now Oya Inoue, a statement victory in his home country of Japan. And wow, wow and wow is all I can say about the monster as he does it at home. He never gave the man an opportunity to get into this fight. He was poised, he was calm and calculated. And the big right hand that landed at the end of the first round started all the trouble for Nanito Demir, and he was never able to recover because Inouye is so efficient with his punches. He doesn't waste anything. He rarely opens himself up to be caught himself. Demir tried to land the shots, but the explosiveness and the power proved to be too much.